Welcome, this is a 30 minute Hatha yoga practice and we're gonna jump right into it and I'll talk about things later. So just lean to your right foot and lift your left foot for tree pose and join your hands together. Uh, I think Hatha yoga is underrated uh, in Victoria, where I'm based, it has a reputation of just rolling on your back yoga, but um, it's actually very similar to if you've ever practiced Iyengar yoga, where you just go pose to pose to pose to pose, and uh, I really like it. You can actually uh, lose a lot of time in the practice just by flowing between poses, that that ends up being like half of the practice itself. So with Hatha, I am a big believer that it's just actually doing the poses and holding the positions, not with a timer, but just being succinct. So lower your left foot and then lift your right foot. You could go inner ankle, inner shin, or all the way up to your upper inner thigh. Got the birthday boy on, happy birthday. Uh, hands together, actively push your hands firmly into each other. Place your thumbs to the center of your sternum and then lift up into that resistance that you create with your thumbs to your chest. Okay, and then lower your foot down. Take a wide stance on your mat and then stretch your arms out to a T. And in general, a wide stance is defined as uh, having the feet underneath your wrists. So you can do this awkward hand movement where you're like, hi, moving my hands down to, to see. You could also drop something. Um, it'd have to be really light though to check. Don't drop a heavy weight onto your feet. Then place your hands to your hips. Bend your knees a little bit so you can tilt your pelvis forward, the opposite of tucking under, and then hinge forward and touch your hands down. From here, actively push your feet away from each other as if you were going to split your mat into two. And uh, we often say that as yoga teachers, just as a, a functional directional cue to push out with the, the feet so that it would actually do something. But I have taught, uh, it was actually at a, a middle school that bought yoga mats knowing that I was going to be coming as a school teacher to teach there. And they bought <laughs> yoga mats that might have been like, two dollars each because I would say that and I'd watch the kids literally rip the mats apart when they did that. Uh, place your hands to your hips and inhale slowly rise all the way up and then step one foot in then the other foot in. Reach your arms up into the air hold on to your right wrist with your left hand and then arc over to the left. This is one where it might uh, benefit by moving a little bit in and out of the pose I know some regular students like to step, in this case, the right foot back a bit, or you could turn it into a different bounce where you lift your left leg out to the side. Okay, and then come up and then go to the other side. So hold your left wrist with your right hand, just showing a different side, and then leaning over to the right. Again, you could tick tock a little bit, just getting a nice side body stretch. Just since I'm talking about Iyengar yoga and its association with Hatha yoga, whereas Ashtanga is more flow or specifically power flow, I thought I'd bring, apart my, uh, bring upon my favorite quotes from Iyengar, or at least two that I just randomly pulled out of a book. Uh, so freedom, is also in our body in the everyday dance. I read that wrong. Clasp your hands behind your back. Mic check, mic check. And then now hinge forward at your hips. I made a mistake of uh, writing it on my wall, but then putting the word independence. Um, and then also not actually finishing the whole quote. Anyways, the whole point of it was that freedom is in the body and it's uh, the ability of every limb to move independently of its neighbor. That's freedom. Gosh, live classes, you can't go back. Good thing nothing can possibly go wrong. 
possibly go wrong. Okay, on an inhale, come all the way back up and then just uh, paying attention to that one a little bit more. So just switch to have your other thumb on top and the level of capacity is gonna be quite different for everyone. So some of you will literally be able to join the wrists, the base of your hands together. Uh, you may need to bend your elbows to do that first and then try to make that the point and then push your arms straighter. And then that's pretty tough for me. I can't go much further. If you can go further, you can then have your fingers uh, interlaced, but then extend your fingers long so that they're in line with the hands themselves. So here's me showing it with the bent elbows. Again, you could have straight arms. Of course, you're always welcome to have a strap behind you instead. So holding on to the strap, then you could have it where your arms externally rotate or internally rotate. Take a wide stance with your legs again. Approximate where your feet are with uh, respect to under your hands when they're out to the side. Bend your knees a little bit and then bow forward. So using your breath, allowing yourself to flow within and without of the pose. Um, so that means that you inhale and lengthen, maybe come out of the pose, and then exhale, bow inward a little bit further. And of course, that could be a movement of your arms as well. So it's challenging enough with the strap. With the strap, I have a lot more range of motion. Um, fingers interlace less, heels of the hands even less, heels of the hands and pushing the fingers straighter even less. Okay, on your next inhale, slowly rise all the way up to stand and then step your feet closer together. Balancing again, lean to your right foot, lift your left foot, but cross your ankle over your knee, making a figure four shape. Then bend your standing leg, lift your knee up a little bit higher, bend further into your standing leg, take both hands, grab both butt cheeks, lift that up, and then keep the back of your pelvis open and start to open your knee out to the side. You can flex the left foot just to keep the entire leg charged and energized and then tilt forward with your hands near to each other. Okay, one more breath in and then breath out, lower your foot down and switch sides. Balance on your left, cross your right ankle over your left knee. Quotes, I'm not very good at reading them. That's that, you can quote me on that one. Do like a, a print screen and then, and then add that in, tag me. We live in such a weird world now where you can just like take a, a print screen of someone else's work and then just like tag them. The other day I was teaching a class and I had the mic in the back pocket of uh, yoga jeans and then it made it look like my butt was square. It was quite funny. Someone sent that. Okay, uncross your foot, step your feet wide again, and then reach your arms out. Turn your right foot in, turn your left foot out, and bend into your knee for warrior two position. Pausing to hold here, pull the feet towards each other, Get your legs active and strong. On your next exhale, bend into your front knee a little more and add a little bit of angel wings. In whatever you are doing, be one. Body, soul, mind. Do it beautifully and with purity. That was the second quote. Uh, push your uh, left leg straighter, turn your left foot in, turn your right foot out, and then bend into the other knee going into the other side. I just wanted to get the quote perfect before I said that that was the quote. I didn't want to have a uh, recreation of the first screw up, totally blew it. Settle in. Again, you could do an inhale and come out of the pose slightly and then exhale, bend in a little bit more the angel wings just to feel noticing again, uh, 
that botched quote where freedom is just having the ability to move limbs independently. Um, and it's really just the power of the mind and its connection to the body that we can do that. Uh, push your right leg straight, turn your right foot in, turn your left foot out, and then side angle position, bend into the knee, forearm to your thigh, and swing your arm alongside your ear. You're always welcome to go into a deeper side angle where you put your hand onto a block or to the floor. Uh, I think a big part of becoming an advanced yoga practitioner is starting to become so aware at the different parts of the body and being able to move independently. For example, I start to focus on using the toes as like grips to hold on to the mat to have a bit more of an anchor point. And then from that anchor point, expand and reach all the way. Okay, push with your feet, come all the way up, straighten your left leg, turn your left foot in, turn your right foot out, bend into your knee, forearm to your thigh, swing the arm alongside your ear. The rotation of your arm has an effect on your upper back, which then has an effect on your breath. So if your thumb is down in that way with the palm in the forward direction of where your eyes are, uh, that can narrow the upper back, making it harder to breathe into that area. So instead go thumbs up, yeah, thumbs up, and then actively reach and extend. Option to have the hand down to the floor. I think I saw either mom or dad join in. Let me know if you actually are practicing today. I didn't get to see you guys on family day. Happy family day. My favorite holiday growing up, family day. Still is. Most people pick Christmas or Canada Day, Thanksgiving. Push with your feet, come all the way up, and then turn your foot in. Option this time, you can go fingers together, bend your knees. This is right out of Iyengar. On three, it's going to be hop the feet together and slap the thighs. One, two, three. Whew. Neighbors downstairs aren't too happy. Lean to your right foot again and then lift your left foot back behind you. Hold on to your foot for dancer's position. Kick your foot back into your hands and reach your arm forward. Lift your chin. Option to bend the standing leg a little bit more. You're always welcome to just explore different versions where you hold the foot with both hands. You could even interlace your fingers behind you doing that to get a bit more of an opening through the chest. Oh, mom's practicing, great. And then also option is to just extend your left arm forward, kick your foot back, lift your knee higher, look forward. So I used to teach Hatha and Hatha flow at Hema. I noticed uh, just in the last week that they changed their Instagram handle and took yoga off. Um, so unfortunately, they are one studio that uh, I don't know if will be getting yoga anytime soon. They have acupuncture as well, so they moved acupuncture into the yoga room and uh, never reopened yoga. Lower your foot and switch sides. Lift your right leg back behind you, grab hold of your foot, and then extend your left arm forward, dancer's pose, which is just a good reminder to say, stay supportive of your local yoga studio because it's challenging times right now. Same with the, the local nightclubs. I was partying it up last night with another 400 people and we we're just saying, man, we just don't get to do this very much anymore. Option to hold your foot with both hands. If you're new to my sense of humor, that didn't happen. It's not allowed to happen. There are no nightclubs anymore. Option to reach your arm forward, except for that private one in downtown Vancouver that someone made in their penthouse suite and uh, they got busted because they did a skip the dishes order with like 200 cheeseburgers from McDonald's and then the police happened to stumble upon it and be like that's a little too many for one person. Okay and then lower your foot down go for the wide stance again and just doing transitions between poses without the flow so turn your right foot in quite a bit this time, turn your left foot out, same thing, except now the hips are square 
towards the front end of your mat. Then bend into your knee with your heel down for warrior one position. Reach your arms up into the air. And you're welcome to have the hands wide. I'm a big believer of go wide with the hands, turn the palms to face each other, or even starting to face back behind you to give more space to breathe in all sides of the ribs. But there are versions where you look up to the hands, interlace your fingers, or even cross um, the hands totally flat with the, the thumbs crossed as well, and then reach up. So there's that, and then there's that. Settling in a little lower, try to anchor down through your back heel, hold strong, and then straighten your left leg. Turn your left foot in as you turn the right foot out. You can keep the arms up, and then just bend into the other side. Again, option to have the hands wide. Looking forward, settle into the front leg more. Anchor down and push your feet apart. Has anyone split their mat in two? I think that'd be pretty funny. Okay, and then push your leg straight, turn your right foot in, turn your left foot out. Same setup of everything. You can even put your hands to your hips momentarily because it'll be a hinge forward now towards Parsvottanasana, which is called intense standing hamstring stretch. We often call it pyramid in, uh, in yoga practices. So just ways to make it more accessible. You can put your hands to a block and lessen the intensity of the, of the rounding of the back, not of the stretch to the back of the thigh. Another option is to have a slightly longer stance with your back heel lifted. That's uh, especially beneficial for those with tighter hamstrings. So bend your front leg a little bit, try to lift your sit bones up, use your inhale to lift to a halfway lift position so you can create the arch in your low back. And then from there, push your front leg straighter and then finally, almost regrettably, round over your front shin. So if you're flexible in your hamstring, then some of these forward folds are like, oh yeah, back stretches are great. Um, and then where it gets challenging is if someone becomes a teacher in that situation, because those who have less flexible hamstrings, when they do a forward fold, it's not a back stretch, it's, it's a back pain that they're experiencing. And then uh, a less skillful teacher might be like, well, you need to stretch out your back more and, and actually it amplifies the pain. So everyone is unique. Uh, push with your feet, slowly rise up, turn your left foot in, turn your right foot out, switch sides, square your hips, big breath in, lift, and then exhale, hinge forward. So uh, also just in a general class, it's general instructions being offered. So each person has to adjust accordingly, depending upon their own body. Lift for the halfway lift position, bend your knee a little bit. Again, you could lift your back heel to give yourself some more advantage. I can do both sides, but I actually like the heel lifted. Um, lifting your butt helps to get the stretch and isolate it to the front thigh. Lengthen your spine, the back of the thigh. Push the front leg straighter and then bow forward over your leg. Option to go forehead to shin. I know people who can almost hold the back foot in this position. They can round so far. Well, I'm proud of you. Okay, and then push with your feet. Come all the way up. Turn both feet to face the long edge of the mat. Fingers together. Bend your knees. Sorry, neighbors downstairs. On three. One, two, three. Got it. Okay, and then lean to your left foot. Um, and I, I was leaning to my right foot as I said left foot. Um, so lean to the left foot and then hold on to your right foot with your right hand. Okay, allow the knee to go out to the side. So I'm gonna face forward, knee goes out to the side and then pull down with the foot as you resist and lift up with your hand. Now maintaining that resistance Lift your shin till it's parallel to the floor and pause and hold here. So no rush. You're always welcome to hold your big toe instead. This is enough of a stretch for me. 
if you then like to straighten your leg, push your leg straighter. So that's when I get into full shake leg look mode. To adapt myself, I'd have to actually hold the back of the thigh. Or what can be nice is uh, using a strap in this situation and I can have a little bit more leverage. So the goal isn't necessarily get the leg straight. I can get the leg straight down low like that, but uh, maybe attempt to go higher, especially if you're flexible, have your thigh bone slanted up and then try to get your shin in that same angle. Okay, then bend your knee and switch sides. Balance on your right, hold on to your left foot. Pull down with your foot, but your hand is like, hey, we're staying, stay up. And then foot is like, I don't wanna go to school. And then the hand is like, you gotta go to school. Uh, or of course, hold on to your big toe, open the knee up to the side, and then lift your shin till it's parallel to the floor. Pause and hold here. You can counterbalance here. You can make a, a mudra with your thumb and index finger. Lift your chin, hold strong, and then option to work your leg straighter. Ooh. And again, if you have the capacity to strap up the foot, I stayed balancing the whole time, you can use that as uh, leverage or hold the back of the thigh. Okay, and then lower your foot down and then just lower down into all fours position. Here in all fours, lift your left leg back behind you Bend your knee and reach back with your right hand to grab hold of your foot. Kick your foot into your hand, lift your knee higher and twist to the right. And then switch, lower your hand, lower your knee and lift your right leg back. Reach behind you with your left hand, grab hold of your foot, kick your foot back, lift your knee higher, twist towards the left. I'm wondering who uh, Tamako Kato is. Looks like Millie Vanilli in the photo there. Gotta blame it on something, right? Another day of rain. Okay, then hand down, knee down, tuck your toes under, lift up to downward facing dog just momentarily as transition to slide your right shin forward for pigeon prep position. So have your shin uh, not necessarily parallel to the front edge of the mat. It can be at an angle as much as uh, 45 degrees. And then peek over your left shoulder and check to see that the left leg is in line with the long edge of your mat. Move your hands back so you can get to a point where you pull your knees towards each other to puff up your chest just so that you stay engaged. And then from there, lower down onto your elbows. And not the type of engaged where like two people get engaged, but then they don't actually get married because they just want to get engaged, but like engaged in terms of strengthening your legs so that when you stretch, you're stretching into a resistance. Uh, there is a place for, of course, relaxing and stretching mildly, but uh, um, I'd say in terms of my own personal passion, those who take classes with me regularly, I don't necessarily teach on, on the passive side. Um, and I'm just speaking from experience and how my body reacts to that. Okay, to switch, you don't even have to go back to down dog. You could actually just go back to all fours and then slide the left shin forward and walk the fingers back. And just know if you, you go for a flow, that takes up 10 seconds and then another one, 10 seconds, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And once you get that engagement, come down onto your elbows. So attempting to be more efficient, which is up there in one of my favorite quotes as well. To be more efficient means to use less words and be succinct so that your point is easier to understand and nobody has their time wasted by listening or reading a quote that you produced 
at a moment's notice. That's one of my quotes. So some find it pretty easy to roll onto one hip and swing the other leg around. Um, I can do that one side easily. This was the side. The other side, I kind of have to go back to all fours. Then uh, if you like sitting on a block, you're welcome to join the bottoms of your feet together, open your knees out to the side. I actually use a strap on this one sometimes. It's really helped, as you can see. I've gone from having my knees up about here in the pose to now getting them like here. So it's really helping. And uh, if I do, do use the strap, I loop it around the feet and then do a crisscross. And then from there can pull. And what I do by pulling the, the straps, I guess the ends apart, is it actually pushes the feet together and allows me to focus on opening the knees out to the side just through the strength of the feet pushing together. So just one way. Another way is to uh, hinge forward, kind of up to you at this point. I'm going to take advantage of having the strap with me for a couple of the other poses as well. Okay, and then rise up if you hinged forward. Just bring the knees in a little bit and then slide your right leg long. Bring your left foot in so your heel is in front of your pubic bone. And then we'll do this pose twice. So on the first side, it's going to be just to hinge forward over the extended leg. And I've intentionally strapped it up to then bow forward over the leg. Or you could hold, bowing over the right leg, the foot, the shin, the ankle with the left hand and use your right hand as a little bit of an outrigger. And it's not long holds. So on your next inhale, come up and switch sides. So bring your right heel in, turn over your left leg, and then hinge forward. And sometimes the limiting factor isn't the straight leg, it might actually be the bent leg. And what that means is that uh, it can be knee challenges just because your knee is in a position where it's bent uh, fully, so full flexion. And that's why I, I sit up onto a block and actually on this side, I probably need the block a little bit higher or needed to practice probably 30 minutes more in standing posing. Okay, and then come up and then good news, back to the first side. And then turn over the bent leg this time. I'm going to still loop up the foot and then as you turn over the bent leg, lean to your right, hold onto the strap with your right hand, or you could hold the big toe side of the foot. And I can actually hold that with um, the right hand. Then with your left hand, reach up and over. So what I can't do is hold the foot with the left hand. So I'll do a kind of hybrid here. You could actually hold the strap with both hands as well, or hold uh, the foot with both hands. Paravrita Janu Shirshasana. Okay, and then come up and then switch sides. So left leg long, right heel in. Again, option to use the strap or not. Turn over the right leg, so the bent knee leg and then lean over to the left. And this one is a bit more dramatic. So there's no chance that my right hand is getting to the foot and you could actually just hold it here. It's almost like a, a playoff of sundial pose, a seated position where you're then doing sundial, this kind of line on your side. Um, if you can hold your foot easily, it'd be the inside of your foot with your left hand thumb down and then right hand over top on the outside of the foot, the, the little toe side also with thumb down, and then pull on your foot with both hands and push against the resistance of your hands. And then look up, you can take a big breath, make sure you've got deodorant on. Yep, good, everything's feeling fresh. And then come up, extend both legs straight forward, bend your knees a little bit, 
pull cheek to cheek out just so that you can sit up taller and then hinge at your hips to bow forward. And then starting with bent knees to be able to hold your shins, your ankles or your feet. And then from there, push your legs straighter and begin to finally round, uh, bringing the forehead towards the shins. So if you're flexible, again, it becomes a bit more of a back stretch. And part of that is just because you might not even feel the stretch for your hamstrings. Those of you with tighter hamstrings, take away any back component and then just try to hinge at your hips so it isolates for the back of the legs. And I know you're not happy with me. I'm not happy with me, which is bad news for me. One more breath in. And then exhale out. Okay, inhale and come up and then pull your feet in. Just an option to go heel to heel alignment, Siddhasana. Um, you can even close the Siddhasana by putting one foot up on top of the other. Not quite half lotus, half lotus is getting the foot all the way like up on the thigh. But uh, there's lots of actual different ways to, to sit. I'm actually just gonna go heel to heel alignment. And we'll go for one minute seated position to breathe if you're more comfortable sitting with your back to a wall. You could even have your legs out. You can do that. We'll get ready in just a couple of cycles of breath. So using your breath to unwind, to prepare. It still takes effort to sit upright. And we'll begin one minute. On your next inhale, just float your arms forward in front of you straight and turn your palms to face each other about shoulder distance apart. And then bend your elbows slightly and curl your fingers in towards your palms. So freedom is in our bodies. The independence of every limb with regard to its neighbor. And open your eyes and thumbs up. Namaste. Thanks everyone.